Van harte welkom vanmiddag bij de presentatie van Unseen. I all welcome you here in Pakhuis is Weiger uh, for the presentation of uh, my book Unseen. It's about uh, Cambodia, as you know. And Cambodia is one of the countries that is um, maybe one of the poorest in the, in, in the whole world. And I had a beautiful, beautiful, uh, long-term project together with Van. And I met a lot of, lot of people. And today, Andrea van Paul, uh, she will be here shortly and present this all to you at home. Um, she will ask me questions so I can just answer and lean back. And, um, well, I guess she's on her way. Welcome. Hello, Ellie. Hi. Welcome, Hi. Andrea. Welcome, everybody, to this uh, special launch of the book Unseen. This is the book. That's the book. Am I... Can everybody hear me? Yep. Um, so, we're going to introduce uh, the guest, of course, uh, Eddie Falk, the, uh, the creator of this, the photographer documentary project. Um, for the rest, uh, Bill Morse, your former project manager at uh, the Lime, Man, Lime Museum. Welcome, yes. Bill. Hello. Hello. So, w you're, uh, you live in Cambodia, don't you? I do. I live in Siem Reap. I live about 10 minutes from Angkor Wat. Okay. And what time is it now at your place? 7 p.m. or 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. All right. All right. Um, Luke Hunt, he's here as well. Uh, you're a freelance yeah. correspondent, Asia. I am, yes. And in Phnom Penh. So, uh, not that far, but we're on the same time zone. Yeah. Six yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about the book. Um, but first, Ellie, you wanted to show us something, a little film uh, yeah. introducing, I think, is the is the, the the sound all right? Sounds is it close right. enough? Okay. Yeah. So Ellie, you want to do uh, show us something about the bombing? Can you introduce the film? Or are we going yes. to look at? It's uh, it's a time lapse of all bombings <coughs> by American army during 1965 and 1973, all unseen and unauthorized by Congress. And these countries in Southeast Asia are the most bombed countries in the world. You cannot imagine how many bombs have been falling. So we can start this time lapse. Thank you. 
it gives me the creeps. Every time, again, when I see this. Yes, because, well, you're, in, of course, into the... Pro for me, as an outsider, you th see... And every every flash you see is bombing, bombing, yes, bombing. All bombing. You see Vietnam, and then in the, the, the last... Uh, uh, fragments of the of the uh, film. It's more in Cambodia, eh? yeah. and that's the, also the unseen things. It's all uh, it's all unseen. The bombings are not uh, authorized by the American Congress. Also not in the no. Vietnam. <gasps> but that's terrible. And and of course, Bill and 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 Luke knew. Also, I mean, people knew. Although, yeah, of course, it's c it's called unseen. Yes, yeah. it is unseen. Yeah, and still, people have been living under the rain cover of bombs. Can you imagine? No. 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 Neither can I. No. Really not. No. If you see this landscape, it's all the American fonts. Like, all the bomb craters are still there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see that later because you took pictures of and then American ponds are called and that's yes. a, and and it looks for an outside. Hey, that's yeah, a nice very pond. nice, very nice place. Yes, yes. But they are not. They, they are, are not. not. And no. it's you said uh, we cannot count it. T but are they counted? Because it's a yes. total of one hundred and fifty thousand two hundred seventy three targets where bombs. It just says in there. Cambodia, yes. And that's just in Cambodia. Just in Cambodia. And. It's difficult to estimate the number of civilians that died as a result, and some say fifty thousand, and some say six hundred thousand. I don't know. Bill, do you uh, have any idea how many civilians are killed by these bombings? We we use the number six hundred thousand. The American, the, one of the American ambassadors came to the Landmine Museum one day, and he saw the table that we have, and, and he saw the presentation that we gave of the bombing. And he uh, looked at it and he, he looked at me and said, that's the high number. And I <laughs> said, yeah, yeah, it's the high number. Which number do you use? So we don't, we don't know how many people died. No. We don't know how many are civilians. Um, body counts in Vietnam were simply that, body counts. And everybody killed was considered to be enemy. An entire territory area was considered uh, unfriendly territory. So everyone who died was Viet Cong. Yeah. In Cambodia, everyone who was killed was considered uh, part of the Ho Chi Minh Trail or a supporter of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, yeah. a Cause, worker. Because you were, uh, what I read, already into the anti-war movement uh, in in the early 70s. So you knew already things <laughs> are not going well uh, there. Yeah, I, I was a university student in the late 60s. Yeah. I, was a I was a commissioned officer in the United States Army. I did not go to Vietnam. I, I did a very short stint on active duty and I went out. But I became an anti-war activist in the late 60s. In 1968, I was in I was in university and a kid was sitting next to me and we started to talk and he had shown up late in the semester. I said, you know, where you been? And he said, I was in Utapau Air Base in Thailand. And I said, what were you doing there? He said, I was loading up airplanes to bomb Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam. So. Yeah. The, the secret bombing of Cambodia was no secret to the Cambodians no. or the Lotions or the, or the Thais or the Vietnamese. It was uh, a secret from the American public yeah. kept by a lot of people. But no, it was, it, there were people who knew what was going on, the extent of which we didn't know until, until the war ended. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think about Ellie Falk? I mean, so many years later, she's making this project. How important is that? Oh, I think it's, I, I think it's, it, it has to be done. This can't be forgotten. Oh. Uh, the history we don't know is the history we forget. Um, this has happened again, and it's going to happen again. And publishing this book is going to remind people that we can't allow this to happen. And when it does happen, we have a responsibility, a moral responsibility, all of us, not, so not just the people who dropped the bombs, but, but the people who, who supported the continuation of that war until 1998 to, uh, to clean up what they did. Yeah, yeah. So, Eddie, I mean, you entered the Landmine Museum. Yeah. Uh, when was that for the first time? You uh, the first time was in, I guess, November uh, 2018 or nine, 19. 
19. Uh, and then we met. Um, and I entered the Landmine Museum because I wanted to see a little bit more uh, what Cambodians in their own country uh, did about um, uh, remembrance. Or how do you recall all the horrors of 30 years of war? Yeah. How, do you how do you do that? Yeah. And they have a war museum in Simrip, and they have a landmine museum in Simrip. So I visited those places, and it's pretty bad. But at the landmine museum, uh, especially with Bill, uh, we met there, we talked, and then I just saw how he preserved history on the bombings. In the war museum, on the other hand, it is like uh, tiptoeing around. It's like tiptoeing around the bombings and American involvement in yeah. Cambodia. Because nobody wants to know that the American did so right. such a devastating things. Uh, although, I, I, it, well, why is always a big question, yeah. and it is always very difficult to answer. Yeah. Why? Why are people doing these things? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't have answers, no. so I just went looking for what do Cambodians preserve yeah. about these hor horrible times. Because what I uh, what I heard is that, and Bill, you you know that as well, that this time of th these bombings are a little bit put put away. Also yeah. in the landmine museum, eh? there there are a lot of things about uh, later, of course, the killing fields, Pol Pol, eh? yeah. the Khmer Rouge. This uh, fact, these facts are a little bit put aside. How did you? Mm. Well, um, not so much in the landmine museum. I saw uh, more in the pretty worms. much. Uh, uh, they were in my face the minute I, I entered, um, and I, I was accompanied by uh, Van, and Van was just horrified by the small videos they um, they were. Uh, we, uh, showing yeah. on bombings and fire, and he was horrified. And he, he of course, you, you do, you keep up the good face, yeah. and say, well, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a man, so I can do things. But he was horrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um We'll now go to 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 Van. Hey, you, you, uh, Van yeah. is is. I didn't know if you call it Van or Van. 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 Um, so you met him. Yeah. Because because of him, you made this book and this whole project. And Luke and and Bill um, uh, are are in it as well. Yeah. So how did you met him? And when did you think, hey, I'm going to to make a project of this man? Well, that uh, to make a long story short. <laughs> I met him uh, nine years ago, when he was out tuk-tuk driver in Phnom Penh on a long journey in Southeast Asia. Yeah. First of all, why did you go to Cambodia? Uh, then at those. It's it's part of Southeast Asia, and we went to Laos and North and South Vietnam, and of course we wanted to visit Cambodia as well. And in the first place, hmm, I thought well. Of course, these beaut beautiful Angkor Wat uh, uh, temples, they are amazing. The culture. The culture. Then uh, it's, it's uh, Van who, who pulled me into all the violence uh, of that country. I knew a little bit about Pol Pot. I knew about Vietnam War. But, but And then after the killing fields, uh, we visited the killing fields. He was just sitting there and said, well, my family was bombed. Five brothers and sisters were killed. Little kids were killed in the bombing. And I looked at him and said, huh? when was that? Yeah. And he said, 1970, I was just born. And I, I just didn't know how to respond to that. No. Because most of it, when you visit for the first mm -hmm. time, it is about Pol Pot. And that's Mavus. a few years later, huh? And a few years later, I just... They, uh, Pol Pot a few years later, 1975. 
And I worked uh, uh, with Van on a, on a project to uplift his business. Uh, didn't work out the way we wanted to, but still, we tried. And then I wanted to do a photography project, just a light, light-hearted one, not too difficult, not too intense. So I went uh, back to Cambodia and asked him uh, if he would like to work with me on a book about his life. Yeah, so he's the protagonist of Hester. So yeah, yeah. so that's what it started. A little bit like a tuk-tuk driver van, yes. with of course a history, but yeah. and then uh, we started to, uh, started to work, and he was very servitude. His servitude was great. He was showing me places, he took me to the market, took me to <laughs> schools, whatever. And then he took me to uh, the village where he was born. And I already had met his mom before and his sisters. And then he took me to the village. And they expected me uh, to make photos, but you cannot make photos. The minute you come in, you cannot make photos. I can't. No. I just have to see and wait and talk and know what people are doing. And um, so we, we walked around the, the village and the next day we came back and then I felt more at ease and they felt more at ease. And that, that this, is this is fun. Let me introduce him. I see in his eyes... A lot of grief. Yes, it is. It's a good. It's a good picture. Of course, I think most of the time he he probably is smiling. I don't know, but you you mm. captured yeah. this, huh? It Or was this m most of the time his no, expression? No, it's, it's, it's not most of the time. It's like when he is not in contact. Yeah. He's like this. He's just introvert. Yeah. And in himself. Yeah. And uh, so you took this picture, of course. When you uh, later on, when you, when you met and told the story, and then he told the story of his uh, place where he was born, hey, where the children were playing in the fields and they were yeah. bombed. Well, we were at the village uh, with his mom and his sisters, his younger sister, and um, they went into the kitchen, and I followed them in the into the kitchen. This is Kunan, mother, and we t and we we chatted as women. It is just comforting to be in some kind of a, a company of women in a kitchen. I like to cook, so <laughs> and I like to make photos, so they let me just do whatever I wanted to do. And did she speak English, or what, no. what langu language did you communicate? Uh, I speak English, and Van speaks English. So he was a translator? Yeah, he okay. was. Yeah. So he followed, he followed me everywhere I went. Yeah. And then I left the kitchen, and she followed me. Kunan followed me. And then she talked to Van and said, well, come, come, come. And he followed her. And she sat down in her, what is it? Uh, I don't know how you call it in English. It's uh, um, mm -hmm. hangmat, jongens, hangmat. Oh, yeah. Hammock. Hangmat? Yeah. Hangmat. Bill, how you Hemok. call it? You know, hammock. sing where you hang in, <laughs> where you lay in. Ha hammock. Oh ha yeah, ham hammock. Hammock. Yes. Hammock. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill, for mm. translating from yeah. Cambodia. <laughs> so uh, here she's sitting in a hammock. Oh yeah, yeah, that's. The, yeah. And then she said, "I want to talk," and she started to talk. Just started to talk. She looked in, it, it, at me with yeah. the camera. I made one picture of her and I said, "Well, that's a good one." Uh, and then she turned in, inside herself, and she looked like this. Uh, she talked to her son, and they went back to that awful day, uh, January 13, 1970. And she talked about how she lost five small children. And in just, one day, huh? In, yeah. In, in just, let's say, two of them were... Almost killed uh, immediately. Immediately, instantly. Uh, two died within a day, and the third, a, f a fifth one died three months later. All because of these bombings. 
and they knew immediately that there were U.S. bombings, or was it? Well, could it uh, also be? No, it U.S. bombings. Okay. Yeah. So this, she took you back to this tragic day. Yes. Uh, although it was almost 50 years later. It huh? was 50 so years. So it was yeah. such a, a trauma, a big, 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 big trauma. Big trauma. Yes. And then. And then we just well I, I, then. He just said, well, this is what my life is about. Uh, okay. And then he said, okay, this is what my life is about. Let, let me show what my life was about. Yeah. And then we went to uh, a niece uh, where he lived when he went back to school after after Khmer Rouge. Um, he went back to his old school and then he opened up. Before that, when we were in Phnom Penh, he was just well the, the driver, the driver uh, to a tourist of sort, whatever friendly way, yeah, yeah, very friendly. But now he was opening up and telling me a whole lot, a whole bunch of more stories about his life under horrific uh, circumstances. Yeah, yeah, and it is uh, about 30 years in a war zone, I think, yeah. sort of. I mean, I think for you, you slowly uh, notice, like, well, this is not just only the Khmer Rouge, but this is, it's, it's, it's such a such a long story of, of violence, of yeah, trauma, of things. Was it, was there a moment that you thought, how, how can I, how can I cope this in one book? Or what, what was your idea? No. By the way, well, by the time Kunan uh, uh, told you the story, Van opened, Van opened up. Well, I went home early. The first tour in Cambodia, I went home early because I thought, well, who am I that I can um, rec record a story like this in a photo book? Yeah. I, I don't know. No. I have no idea. No. I go home. And then I just uh, uh, talk to myself and the photos I made and said, well, this bombing should be the heart of the book. This is fun story. Uh, and that should be the heart of the book. But how, in heaven's sake, can you make photos of something that happened 30 years ago? Yeah. 50 years ago, and I, I I just didn't know. So it was a, was a search for how do you do that? Yeah. That's so how do you do that, Ellie? Because you made the book. I made the, yes. Finally made the book. Yes. Uh, I, uh, what I went back to, I went back to on second tour in uh, November, the same November. And as, did you speak uh, then to Luke or Bill? No, to not to Luke, but to uh, uh, to Bill. And he told me up more about all these circumstances and um, and I had some kind of a plan I never make plans when I go on a photo tour I just wait and see and then what I'm, comes up to what you. comes up to me but now I have some kind of a plan I wanted to show uh, to work with Van to make uh, to show the um, uh, the bomb craters with him in it. Okay. And there's, I, I guess there's a picture of it. Can we? Yeah, that's it. It's still two meters, three meters deep. He's sitting okay. at the bottom of a bomb crater. Uh, so you're standing, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it looks just like a nice picture because there are the banana plants or yes. what is it? And this is a crater. This is a cr uh, crater, yes. Their yard is full of craters yeah. still. Is full. So, this could be the crater where his siblings are, are killed. Probably, one of them. Oh, and how did he respond? Because was it the first time you, you know, you you took him back to this? Well, he or more earlier he took me back uh, to uh, to show this, but now I just pushed him. Yeah. To make photos of him down there, and that he was hesitant. He was just like, uh, oops. Uh, do I need to go down? Yeah. That's. And why did you want him to, 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 to be there? Because it. Um, it is like for a documentary photographer. For, yeah, you also yeah. then direct things, huh? I'm a, I, I I do a little bit of directing, <laughs> yes. Uh, and my kids call call me a control freak. So, um, anyhow, um, 
I wanted him down there because I wanted to show uh, his uh, response to it. What does it do to you when you go down there? Then you go back in time, and you you have not seen the the horrific uh, thing. In no, because the unseen yard. is also he was a baby, he so was baby. he, he, he was there see. physically, but he couldn't remember. He couldn't remember. He had um, he still in shock when uh, you you hear bombings or you see a documentary in television. And so it was in his body. It is in his body, but not in his memory. But I just wanted to see how he was re responding and would he do that. Yeah. And could we work on what his feelings were in a time uh, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I put him in the bomb crater. Yeah. Yeah. And the next picture was, is it, it black and white? I mean, uh, did you... Yeah, uh, in, in, in the book you have, uh, uh, the whole section is bla uh, on the bombings uh, in the end of 1970, is, is in black and white. Yeah. And because I think uh, it is like black and white. And, and it when you look at green banana trees, yeah, it looks nice and friendly. Yeah. And you can look at it, oh wow, nice. Yeah. And but just imagine that the kids uh, saw uh, planes coming flying over. Yeah. It's not an innocent landscape no, then. It's not an innocent then. landscape. Not so this you took in black and white to to yeah. to bring back back that time. Yes. I just want to ask uh, Luke because you're a you're a, a journalist, huh? You're a freelance. Yes. This story that Ellie is, to is telling, huh? through one family or one person this mm -hmm. this story I, I can imagine that you as a journalist also told these stories in a certain way about these bombings uh yes but man eh, not always i mean the there's been a lot of publications come out and books published and movies made about what happened here uh lots but what i really liked about ali's book is that it brings across that um, the suddenness of what happens to an individual in what's essentially a big geopolitical power play. And I thought that got born home. I think that really came home quite strongly. And for someone like me, who's kind of, I've seen a few things, uh, it was kind of nice to be, <laughs> I mean that now, uh, perverse way, but it was was kind of nice to be reminded that you know the individual, the person, the poor, the Joe Schmuck who'd been ploughing his fields, like and the family had been ploughing those fields for a thousand years, and you know yeah they know how to fight. I mean wars are not unique and they happen a lot, mm -hmm. but it's sort of like be ploughing a field and all of a sudden there's an explosion on the ground. You don't see. You don't hear the plane. You don't see the plane. You had no warning, but kaboom. Yeah. Something's gone off in the middle of your paddy field, and along that maybe went your daughter. You know, I mean, it's, uh, and it's nice to be sort of taken down to that level. And given that this happened, you know, I mean, this happened, what, 40, 2008, it happened, it's been a while, yeah. and there's been a lot of other wars since. But, it's um, been a while, but you yeah, see yeah. that the, the family is still traumatized, huh? How long that... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got second, third generation Cambodians now. There is an argument about PTSD being, um, uh, got, you know, becoming gener a generational thing. I'm not convinced. But uh, the, the you know, Cambod there are still issues. There's still a lot of, there's still a lot of landmines, which... Yeah. And nothing to do with the Americans, I might add. Uh, but the UXOs across the country, I mean, they've only got rid of about half. Yeah. yeah. They're about that they encountered when UNTAC came in in 1992. So there's still a lot to be kind of done out there. And it's, you know, the legacies, um, it's been an extraordinary legacy that uh, the Indo Chinese wars have kind of left with this country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ellie, I mean, that said, we'll, we'll talk to Bill as well. But still, the war is going on because there's so many. What Luke says, so many still, so many landmines are still there. Yeah. So 
You yeah. you keep reminding, hey, you 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 said in the book somewhere, so an innocent foot or something has steps yes. on thing, and boom, and then it all comes back again. I mean, yes, it is. Then it all comes back. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So um, when I spoke to you, you said I I was inspired by Auschwitz. Yeah. Can you tell me again that story? Why you wanted to make a book? Like this, which tells the story about the people and yeah. not ha about. Can you tell it? Yes, and we. Uh, it is happening all the time when you talk about war. Uh, you talk about bombings and you talk about destruction and you talk about uh, the power structures that are engaged in a war. And of course, we have all listings of the. Um, uh, the people uh, who died or got maimed or uh, got murdered. All those memorial uh, memorials. But when I visited uh, Auschwitz, I saw in these uh, Birkenau uh, 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 fields all kinds of little reminders of people. Small, small reminders, like a small photo of a, a woman, a man, a child with some stones on it. Uh, as a reminder of this person died. This person was a person with a, with a history. Yeah. They have lived. They lived along, uh, lived for years. They had families. They made love. They made. May they argue, went to school. Whatever. They had went friends. School, whatever. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are uh, persons, and then in an instance, uh, they are gone. And when you go to the ga uh, gas chambers, you see whole these large pictures with people sitting in front of the gas chambers uh, where they will be murdered. And then I thought, well, we remember these people uh, in a mass sitting here to be murdered. And these are all individuals, all people who died on a horrific way, in a horrific way. And these are people, these are families, these are people with a, with a history. And we don't, it's, it's when you remember, of, be reminded of reminiscence uh, about the people that are not there anymore. Um, you want to see a whole person. Yeah, and not just the violent and, end. And huh? not the violent end. No, because that's so trauma. Uh, 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 it's a trauma, traumatizing. And it's not complete, of course. It's not eh? complete. Never. It's never complete. So you wanted to make the persons yes. vivid and 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 the love and the friend things. Yeah. So uh, we ha maybe we have some more pictures because it's nice to see how you created then this book. Because uh, what you had a sort of yeah. This is a sort of ghost? Just uh, a ghost picture, yes. Uh, I want to make a ghost picture. And what do you mean by that? It is like he is seen and he is not seen at all. We see people and we don't see them. And they have lost uh, eight children yeah. and, a, and a grandchild in total. And they are uh, just remembered in the way they died. And it is difficult to talk about them. Yeah. So you don't see them, oh. but they are there. They are always there in a ghost-like way. So it's like, I'm not here, but I see you. So you wanted to, the eight siblings who are who died, you wanted to portray that in sort of in, in the nature around yes. his his body, but yes. he's also incorporating that. It's That's incorporating beautiful. That. That's beautiful, yes. yeah. 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 And also, you had a first version yes. because the the book, eh? The now book we are sitting impact. here because of COVID, of course. Otherwise, you've been in in Cambodia. Yeah. You had a first version, and you showed that in Cambodia too, Van, eh? And it it made it a sort of how you say that? Um, uh, it, it created. Impact. Yeah, it had an impact. It can you impact. can you tell something about that? Because well, that was uh, how uh, how long ago? Uh, it was in May two thousand twenty. I went back, uh, and I had made a book. This book I put in a in a black box, <laughs> and that's the way I want to present it to the, the ambassador of the United States. It's not possible now, so maybe some other day. 
But with this book, let me see. It is still called Van's story, and it's just about the bombing, not about the rest of the, uh, of the of the wars they lived in. And I said to him, well, when I want to publish this book, a book like this, I need the other family members to agree that I do so. Yeah. So we went with the book uh, to his older brother, the eldest one in the family. He yeah. saw him. The man is 70, he's from 1950. And then uh, they were just a little bit awkward towards one another. It, he didn't know what a white lady, what is she doing here with yeah. my wife's business? What is this Dutch lady here yeah. uh, doing with our family? Huh? No, not so much, it's just what this one with a white lady. He always wants to show off. Oh, okay, That's yeah. That's like. And then he showed him the book, that first version of it. And then Thorne became very emotional. And I'm not used to seeing a Cambodian man uh, be so emotional. Show their emotions. Show their emotions. And then he said, well, in, in Khmer, he just talked to me in, in Khmer. I didn't understand the word, but understood. You know, they were so small. The bombs were raining down on them. Because he was there. All the fire. Huh? He was uh, eight kilometers okay. away. And um, at that minute, I thought, well, they looked at each other and found just that I didn't know. I didn't know what you tell me. I know my brothers and sisters were killed, but I don't know your side of the story. Uh -huh. So I took them uh, uh, to lunch, and they talked, and they talked, and they talked. Yeah. And he translated it a little bit and a little bit some pieces. But it was so intense. Yeah. So it... It, it, it opened you, up. Yeah, it opened up. Because yeah. of you, a stranger from outside yeah. who maybe has a sort of fresh curiosity uh, and empathy yeah. to make a story. And they open up. But then it had more... Hey, you, you had more family members and you, you organized a sort of... Uh, a morning or a sort yeah. of funeral? How, well, how, how, how did that go? His older sister in the village uh, called uh, called him and said, well, you talk to my brother, uh, to Thorin. I want to talk as well. <laughs> I want to yeah. show. Yeah. So we went back to the village and then we talked and she talked and she showed us. And there's a picture as well, I guess. Yeah, here we're showing it. It's, uh, uh, it's a daughter of. These are grandchildren, probably yeah, from. Yeah. Yeah. This is found in one of the grandchildren. Yeah. And uh, they talked, and she, she showed me uh, her wound still of the burning. The and older sister. The older sister. Because she was right. there. Yeah. She was there. She was eight years old. Gosh. Yeah. And well, and they drew in more people from the village more family members. And then I don't understand anything anymore because they just talk. Come here. Yeah. And I walk around with the camera and say, well, okay, you talk. That's the left one on the left is uh, Rai and that's... Uh, so that's Kunan. the sister? Yeah. Yeah. Rai's and the mother, sister, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you created uh, something, eh? something came up. Yes. It can also be... Difficult. I mean, you you as a Dutch photographer or documentary uh, photographer, hey, you open wounds. Maybe they want to close it. So how do they now? Um, I mean, <laughs> you created also a sort of mourning, huh? or a sort of. Uh, yes. Can you can you tell me something yeah, about I it? Yeah, I can. Um, I I just decided at that moment that the book should be m of more. About the, the, the family living in a war zone for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, finally, the book like this, second uh, second edition. Uh, and I just want to thank the family for their openness. Yes. They opened up to me. Yes. They were uh, inviting. They were nice. I ate at their table. 
I was served their food. So I wanted to do something back. And then I asked, well, uh, is it, would you like to have some kind of a, a plaquette with the names of all the children uh, who died? Yeah. And then I said, yes, I want, do you want to? This is it, huh? And this is it. We made it. All the names are on it. It's very, very impressive. It is. And mother, who lost so many children, how mm. did she react with this plaquette and what, what happened? She is like, she's a, a little, she's kind of a little bit opening up, a little bit. Um, she's still hiding in herself, like, uh, and you, you're not always sure what she's looking at. Is she looking for all the children in the yard or just the children who are there? Um, and here's uh, the same. She is just like, oh, yeah, yeah. And she cannot read, so oh, okay. uh, he has to point, Tell wha- point, what is, point yeah. the names. Yeah, yes. yeah. I just wanted to go back to uh, to Bill, because this is you wanted to also to present this book, I think, in the Landmine Museum. Didn't you want to do that? Or in uh, the War Museum? It or would be nice to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> over or have there. an exhibition there. Huh? So uh, that was the plan, wasn't the, it? The plan was to have uh, a, a very small uh, exhibition in the, yeah. the Landmine Museum. Yeah. Uh, just a few photos. Yeah. Uh, and in the Peace Museum, because Bill uh, uh, pushed me <laughs> towards the uh, Peace Museum and said, you have to go there. Yeah. I showed them your book. And, and you what's the Peace Museum there. like then? Um, the Peace Museum is about, uh, um, yeah, how, how can you can you can Bill. Bill. So what's uh, what's the Peace Museum? Sorry, I'm, I don't know. I actually I have not been to the Peace Museum. Oh. Yet, so. <laughs> but you pushed Ellie to go there. I did. I know the people who started it, and I, I I know the whole idea of the Peace Museum is is to remember what happened and carry it forward and make sure that it, you know, it doesn't happen again. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, tumultuous stuff going on at the Landmine Museum for the last two years. And then with COVID coming last year, it pretty much shut everything down. And uh, we had, we also supported the mining team. We support some bomb squads and we started uh, a food distribution program about a year ago. And, and we're, we're working very hard on that. So that's where most of our time has been spent. Yeah. But no, the Peace Museum, this needs to be there. It's, it's When the tourists come back, it will draw a lot of tourists. There are people who come here specifically to see the history of the war, and they go to Chongek, and they go to, uh, uh, they go to the Killing Fields, and yeah. they go to uh, uh, yeah, Tool Slang, excuse me, I couldn't remember the name. They go to Tool Slang and they come to see him reap and they go to the killing fields and see him reap and they come to the landmark museum. They go to the war museum. They want to know what, what, what happened. There's not a lot of uh, people talking about the history of the war. So they can get that history there. And then the Peace Museum and the Landmine Museum can remind them that this problem is a continuing one in Cambodia and it's only going to be solved when we all get together and decide to uh, to clean up what's yeah, left. That's what you're saying, eh? it's, it's, it's still going on and, and it's only going to be solved to to have everyone um, yeah, in action to clean up the landmines, to also the recognition of, eh? of mm, all the mines who li- if there yeah. and what has happened. It's everyone's responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ellie wanted to... Um, uh, I said, uh, present the book to the ambassador of United yes. States. What, what do you think, Bill? Will will he or she accept a book like this? I mean, if if it's so much put away in in history, huh? Like what what has happened there? What do you think? I I think it could be presented to the embassy. I think there's very little chance that the ambassador would make himself available to accept this. Because it's this is yeah yeah this is. Uh, a part of American history that, that we want. We don't want to talk about that. We oh. want to talk about how we're helping to clean it up and, and to make the world better. 
Um, but I don't think the American ambassador is going to make himself available to accept the book. Mm. I can try. Yeah. When when I can when I can get to Phnom Penh, when I can when I can get out, when I can get a copy of the book, yeah. I do know the ambassador. I mean, well. most Americans over here, there's not that many Americans in Cambodia, so he does make himself available for meetings. So we've all met him. Yeah. And, and I know people who work for him, and I certainly can talk to them, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Because it's a bit of, when we talk to Dutch history, it is a bit of uh, the momentum of, uh, like, the Dutch King uh, a few years ago said, has sort of sorry about Indonesian uh, uh violent uh, uh, Dutch uh, army against the mm. Indonesian population in their uh, liberation um, struggle or f uh, war and and, uh, and talking about the slavery yeah. history. So maybe it's a time huh, that also the American... I, what do you think, uh, Ellie? I, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Because now no. Biden is more... Uh, I, maybe? Don't, I, I don't think so. No. They no. don't want to... No. I, I, go, I, go, I go with Bill. So. Yeah. And Luke, no. what do you think? As an you're an Australian, what what do you think? What is the importance of this book, and where should it be, um, where should it be, yeah, presented or donated, or what do you think? Well, I mean, you, you can only ask the ambassador. You might say yes. A lot, a lot of a lot, a lot of them. Um, I think people. It's not always about policy, and you get a lot of ambassadors. Yeah, they'll do it, and others will be like. No, they won't. Um, yeah, you can only ask. Uh, problem is, is uh, COVID. I mean, there lots of lots of issues starting to arise now out of the lockdown, like internet connections and things like that. Um, I think this has been fantastic, uh, but in terms of launching, getting things in anywhere at the moment, it's um, almost impossible. Uh, but I, I'd be, you know, you, it'll come out here. It'll get here. I'd be hitting the universities and um, places like NCM Reap, the uh, Centre for Khmer Studies, mm -hmm. uh, making sure it gets into all those libraries. The photography is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could even go with the photography schools as well. Uh, I think it's I think it's an extremely good essay in terms of telling a story, what it's set out to do, and that's important. And Ali's very good at what she does. So... <clears throat> I'd be tackling that, but at the moment, it's kind of, uh, if you wanted a grand strategy on uh, where to place a book and how to do it, good luck, you know. <laughs> if, you go, if you pick anything up, let, tell yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, well, it's, it's, things are really difficult at the moment. Well, the, uh, last year, uh, last time I visited was 2020, and then I uh, connected to the documentary uh, center of Cambodia and they really wanted a book and they uh, offered to translate it into Khmer and make it available to uh, libraries and uh, schools it's not going to happen now no we are not we are not going over and it, it will take some time no that's why we we sit yeah, here we, we sit here in Amsterdam <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 too bad. Eh? You said it's it, bad. It, it's it needs there. And on yeah. the other side, for me, as sort sort of that we we yeah we know the Khmer Rouge, you know the Killing Fields. Like you said, it's also good for us to to be shaken up. Like there's has so much we don't know. Yeah. And here's it this is. Dutch woman who just tells a story through one person or through one family, yeah. which stands for a yeah for a, a, a war zone we eh? which still goes on. Still goes so, on. Yes. Why did you want to make this book? I wanted to make this book uh, because I think we the book is set out as threat, like it's always war and violence, and uh, the threat of losing uh, loved ones. And there are a lot of dramas that keep us uh, like this. Hold on yeah. and not talk. Close. Close. We close up. But normal life has not so many uh, attention. Like, I would love to know a little bit more about you and like talk about who you are, how love is do doing uh, this in our life, yeah. uh, how we grow and develop 
and connect and work together. And that's far more important than keeping an eye on the wars or the violence or um, what we can do. People can do, are capable of everything. Yeah. The worst and the best. Yeah. And everything in between. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to make the book a setup like threat, drama, yeah. normal life. Yeah. You have three lines which impressed me very much. It's impossible to forget. I don't know if you invented it yourself. Yes, oh, this was yeah. impossible to forget because it's, of course, it's so big. Difficult to remember yeah. because it, it is so grotesque, probably. Hey? It is. Yeah. And then important to share. Yeah. That's it. Bill, what do you think of these three lines? I, I found them very impressive, which shows huh, how you... I like them. I mean, what the book does is it, it humanizes the problem. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the, the war in Cambodia and the war in Vietnam, and we talk about it in the broad strokes, and we talk about Nixon and Kissinger and, and the carpet bombing, but this takes it to the ground. It takes it to one family and tells their story. Uh, the guy I work with is a man named Aki Ra, but he was born in 1970. He was a child soldier. Uh, his family died during the war. And he said one time that uh, we can't ever forget what happened. We have to remember what happened, but we have to move forward. Exactly. And, and make a better world out of, make a better country out of Cambodia. And his job is making his country safe. And that's what, that's what we came over here to, to, uh, to try to help do in our little way. Yeah. And that's what the book can do. Yeah. The book can humanize this problem and it can remind people that it, it wasn't, yes, it was 600,000 people, but this family was decimated and they are still decimated today. And the war goes on and haunts people every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Just w one final question. What is your motivation to, to work there and live there? I met this guy. I had a friend of mine who asked me for $100 to buy a mine detector for a guy he had met in Cambodia who was clearing that mines with a stick and a screwdriver. Um, I was, uh, uh, as I said, I was in the American Army. I was a, I was a peace activist. I was active in, 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 in politics in, in the United States. Um, so my wife and I were intrigued by his story. So we got on a plane and came to Cambodia looking for him. Um, it cost him $500 a month to run his program. He had a, the Landmine Museum. He had a bunch of kids who lived there. He was clearing landmines by himself. So we started a small charity to support his work. Eventually, I came over to help him get licensed and certified by the government. And one year led to two years, led to three years. And my wife and I have been here for 14 years now. So there was never a conscious decision that no. we were going to sell everything we have and move to Cambodia. But we, we found ourselves over here and, and we looked at each other one day and said, you know, we're not going back. This is, this is our life now. This is better than sitting around the golf course, you know. <laughs> Very good. What do you want to say to Ellie for this book launch to f just to final this, uh, finish this hour? I want to say thank you, and I and I want to encourage her to continue to push to get this book distributed. Uh, there are people when the tourists come back to Cambodia, they'll buy this book. Um, I have a friend who who published a book on the history of Cambodia, and he brought it to Cambodia and he sold it in the hotels and the airports and stuff. And and this book will sell. People are looking for stories. They're looking for the history of what happened recently, not just the Khmer Empire. Um, and, and it will happen. Um, you know, this, this, this too shall pass and, and we will get back to some semblance of normality, whether it be this year or next year. Yeah. Um, and uh, this book can make a difference. That's the important thing. It can make a difference. Everybody who has this book on their table will be reminded that it's their responsibility not That's someone else's. Beautiful words. Look, what Thank do you, you want to say to, to Ellie? Good luck. I'm sure it'll go fine. I mean, yeah, I, you just got to wait things out a little bit with COVID, but uh, try and get a distribution list going and um, 
perhaps think a little more out of the box about where you can get books in, that kind of thing. Problem is, I mean, a lot of there's like a lot of bars here that um, double as bookshops, coffee shops, things like that, uh, where you can get books in, and you can actually maybe hit the type of market or the type of person you know, where tourists will go, that kind of thing. And you They're have a cl- platform as well, eh? as a journalist. You have a platform as well. You're going to, to uh, how say that, to, to, to promote it a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, look, when, when it, I mean, you got to have copies with you. I mean, there's, um, I'd be doing something with uh, Al in Sam Reed. That's not hard to do. I mean, let's talk to Wayne McCullum there. Um, there's lots of things that can be done in Phnom Penh, but it's like everything. Everything's closed. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Everything's gone. Yeah. Closed. You know, and it's really all about how we come out of the lockdown, maybe in a couple of weeks, doubtful. Could be a couple of months. It could be a lot longer. You don't really know. And, um, you know, it's like I was saying, the internet's down before. The, you know, the internet's really sludgy at the moment. But there was a storm here three days ago. A branch came off a big tree on 136. No one came to pick it up. So it gets scavenged. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, that branch brought down a couple of wires. We don't know which ones. The people who can fix that are all up in the provinces and they're not coming back tomorrow. You know what I mean? I hear and the sirens. Of- <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's where the yeah. issues are. Yeah, 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 of course. I'd be, the, the, I think the priority, the, sorry, the, pri- <clears throat> the priority should actually be to just get the, you can just get the books in country and have someone mm. look after him. So, I mean, Will Bagley might be able to help out there. I, I think he offered to take it to Monument Books. Yeah. And I, I'd have a chat with them, but, I mean, just get the books in country. You know, yeah. you've, got no, you've got to have the product there on the shelves. We're going to do yeah. that. No, yeah. Thank you so much, Luke, Bill, oh. Ellie. Beautiful words eh, from from Bill and Luke. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're moved you. by the story, but I'm, uh, yeah, I moved. Yes. Yeah, but it, I can imagine it's it's a long project. It's a very intense project. It's uh, it is so much tears, but also joy in yes. in this book. And now we're going to have a lot of copies sent to Cambodia, and yeah. when the tourists come, they will so. really sell it because uh, buy it because it has, like Bill said, um, it makes a story human. It makes a story uh, history on a certain way, a very um, accessible. Yes, so is. I would congratulate you with this beautiful project, with this beautiful book. Thank you. And I would like to thank Bill and Luke again for being here. And uh, hopefully you will three yeah. will meet again somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, some in Cambodia. And stay safe and stay sound. Uh, and I don't know if anybody gets is already vaccinated by Whatever. hopefully soon. Whatever. Okay, thank you so much. And um, thank you, thank nope. you, friends, for being here for your support and um, connection. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was it. And thank you all viewers. Uh, I don't know which one um, for looking and, and, and buy the book. Uh, of course. Of course. And, uh, well, Ellie has her own website, elliefalk.com. Yep. Um, it's coming up. It's coming up. And thank you for uh, for this project again. These Here it's gone. Oh, yeah. Please, please, please. Um, Support. Contact me for any questions or remarks. Um, here you can find my contact. Yeah, it's very easy uh, to find. If it's you easy to find. Google Ellie Valk immediately you're on your website. Yeah. Good luck. You are. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.